here we are. Today we are solving equations. Before this, we were factoring expressions. We weren't trying to find trying to find what t equals or what x equals, but now we are. And you're going to notice that mostly it's what you've been doing, factoring, but um, now it's also, uh, there are some other steps involved because you're actually going beyond factoring to solving equations. This giant blackbird is right outside my door, cawing. I mean, really? Okay, now math. If I haven't got George in my lap, I've got a blackbird cawing out front. I mean, really? I am the animal lady. Here we go. We have t squared plus 8t equals 9. Um, <clears throat> we can't solve that. Nope, we can't. No, so what we have to do is this. We have to move this 9 over to the other side and set this equation equal to 0. That's the way we solve quadratic equations. So I'm going to get blue and subtract 9 and subtract 9. Now I'll have t squared plus 8t minus 9 equals 0. Now I can solve my quadratic equation. I'm going to solve it by factoring. Notice what you learned yesterday about when there's a one leading, um, leading coefficient, a positive one, that's the easy way. So we make two sets of parentheses, but this time we're going to say equal to zero. I take the T squared and split it up into T and T and then I factor negative nine. Well, okay, negative nine equals negative one times positive nine, and I could go through all the rest of it, but notice, since I'm trying to get to positive eight, very conveniently, the very first pair, uh, factor pair that I, I present will actually do the trick, so I really don't have to continue on. Negative one plus nine equals positive eight. Bingo, that's it. So I'll put a minus one here and a plus nine here. Now I'm done with factoring. Now, can you see what I'm doing? Can you see what I'm writing? Anybody? Yes. Good. Good, because I don't have my camera on. Um, okay, now this is what we do. Take each factor. This is a factor of that trinomial, each of these. T minus one, T plus nine, they're binomials. They're binomial factors of t squared plus 8t minus 9. We set each one equal to 0. Then we solve each of these little equations. I add 1 to both sides. 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I have t equals 1, 
And over here, I subtract nine, I subtract nine. T equals negative nine. Those are the zeros of my function, if you like. We talked about that yesterday, but they are also the solutions to the equation. T squared plus 8T minus 9 equals 0, or the original equation, T squared plus 8T equals 9. Notice you have two solutions. That's very common. There are some quadratics that have uh, only one solution, and we'll go into that later, but most of them have two. So now you get to get used to an equation that has two answers rather than one answer. And you can, of course, check each of your answers up here to make sure it's true, and it is. So let's move on. Now here's a quadratic trinomial. Everything's over here on one side. One is your leading coefficient. So that means all I have to do is make a couple of parentheses and then equal zero. I'm going to factor one, not terribly exciting. I'm going to factor one into one times one. And notice that one plus one equals two, and two is the B number, the number I'm looking for. So I will have T, this is a positive one and this is a positive one. So I'll have T plus one and T plus one. Draw my line, set each of these binomial factors equal to zero. Yes, I do see that they're exactly alike. So there's really only a need for me to solve one of them since they're exactly alike. But I'm going to do both just so you can see. I have such trouble when, when there are ones there zeroing out. Okay, T equals negative one and minus one, minus one. Again, we're going to have T equals negative one. This is one of those cases in which you only have one solution. T equals negative one. So in the answer box in my math lab, back here in the first problem, I would have written negative nine comma one or one common negative nine, my math lab will accept both. Don't put parentheses around them though. All you're doing is you're listing your solutions. But here in the answer box, all I'm gonna do is write negative one because that's the only answer I have. Solution. Solution to this equation. So sometimes, not often, but sometimes quadratic trinomials, quadratic trinomial equations do, um, uh, just have one solution rather than two. Most of them have two. Some of them have none, and that's when it really gets interesting. 
OK, here is a quadratic trinomial, but the leading coefficient is not one. That means we're going to have to use um, the AC method and then grouping. So let's do that. I am going to close my cat door. Wait a minute. George was lay the, the vent, the heat vent is right in front of the cat door. So what George loves to do is lay on the cat vent. I mean, it might as well be a cat vent. Lay on the heat vent so the heat is keeping him warm and then have the door to the cat door open so that he can stick his head out and look at what's going on. And I allow this. Yes, I spoil him. It's true. Okay. My fault. Let's do this. 3s squared plus 20s plus 32. 3, yeah, we'll not go into 20, and it won't go into 32. So there is not a GCF for all three terms. So now I'm going to multiply the A term by the C term, and then this is B, multiply A times C so that I have 3 times 32, which will be 96. And then I'm going to factor 96 into two numbers, into factor pairs, one of which will add up to 20, I hope. Let's see. OK, 1 times 96, and I'm going to get the calculator and do my y equals thing, because that just makes it easier. OK, I am going to go to y equals, y equals there. And I'm going to type 96 divided by x. And then not graph, but second graph. Now, now I can see what the factors are. I'm not going to use the five because it gives me a decimal. I don't want decimal answers. So one times 96, two times 48, little stinker, there. There. 3 times 32. 4 times 24. 6 times 16. 8 times 12. There you go. Let's see if there are any other factors. No, nope, and then they start to repeat. All right, 8 times 12 is 96, and 8 plus 12 is 20. Super cool. Thank goodness for technology. Okay. Now that I have my two numbers, positive 8 and positive 12, I go over here and I'm going to, well, you know, I could wait. Why don't I do that? Yeah, let's just go ahead and do our factoring down here. I'm going to have 3s squared and the plus 32 stay the same. And then because I know 3 goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 8, I'm going to make this 12s plus 8s, and 8 goes into 32. Now, if I had not done that, could I still get the problem right? Yes. 
It's just that lazy people try to look ahead a little bit. Okay, now this is three times S times S plus three times four times S. So each of these terms has a three and an S and a three and an S. So three S. Once I've done that, I can mark them out. You don't have to. It's just something I learned to do over time. It's easier for me anyway to see what the leftovers are. There's an S left over in this term and a plus four left over here. Now, out here, I know that eight goes into 32. If you don't know that, you can just break them down completely. But if you do know that, it speeds up your work a little bit. Eight S plus four times eight. And so eight is the GCF in both of these terms. So I'll write down an eight, and then I'll mark through it, and write down my leftovers, S plus four. Now the identical S plus fours become the GCF, I write that down. And what's left over, is 3s plus 8. And we can just do a real quick check if you want, or you can wait till the end or not do it at all. That's dangerous though. 3s squared plus 8s plus 12s, plus 32. Yep, now notice that this, these are the same, 8s and 12s are the same numbers that I used up here, 12s and 8s, 8s and 12s, all the same thing. I combine my like terms, that will give me 3s squared plus 20s, plus 32, which is what I started with. So I know that this is the factorization. Now, yesterday, that would have been what I put in the answer box, but not today. Today, we're solving an equation. So I put the factors here, S plus four times three S plus eight equals zero. Then I draw a vertical line down to keep the factors separate because I set each factor, each of these binomial factors equal to zero. So I'll Back on the left here, I'll subtract four from both sides. So four minus four is zero. I'll have S equals negative four. And over here, I'll subtract eight from both sides. Eight minus eight is zero. So I'll have three S equals negative eight, divide by three, divide by three. So C, that's not C, that's S. S equals negative eight thirds. You can get a fraction answer sometimes. So in the answer box, Uh, 
I'll write negative four, comma, negative eight thirds, or the other way around, you could write negative eight thirds, comma, negative four. My math lab isn't big on forcing you to write it in order, unless it tells you to do that. So notice that just like, not yesterday, but the day before, we use the AC method to find four terms that this three term polynomial will break into. And then we use grouping to find the factorization. Then we use that factorization in the equation. I should have put it up there. We set each factor equal to zero and solve for S or whatever the variable is. And those are our, our solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay. Just, if you have any questions, just blurt it on out. Now, we're going to use U substitution because this is not a quadratic equation. It's a quartic equation. Oh dear, but not to fear because four is two times two. So we can use U substitution to temporarily make the, this quartic equation into a quadratic equation, temporarily. So I'm going to use the U substitution method we've talked about before. U equals X squared right there and u squared equals x squared squared, which when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. This is x to the two times two, and two times two is four, x to the fourth power. So that tells me I can write x to the fourth as u squared, and I'll have 65u because x squared equals u plus 64 equals zero. I'm getting a drink of water. Okay, I put a one in front of it. Because there is a one. The leading coefficient is one, which means this is all I have to do. Now there's a trick for doing the factorization quickly. Another trick. And that is if you notice that 65 regardless of the sign. 65 is one more than 64. You know that 64 equals one times 64 and negative one times negative 64. Well, one plus 64 equals positive 65. And negative one plus negative 64 equals negative 65. So somebody has made this kind of sort of easy. All right, let's try this. U squared minus one. Really? 
u squared minus 64. Okay, because my numbers are, <clears throat> excuse me, negative one and negative 64. Now, something we did yesterday is factor by the difference of two squares. That's what we have here. U squared minus one squared. One times one is one. And U squared minus eight squared. Eight times eight is 64. But don't forget your equals zero. We're going to factor u squared minus one by the difference of two squares. Then we're going to factor u squared minus eight squared by the difference of two squares. So, for this one, we'll have u and one and u and one, and I put a plus in front of one and a minus in front of the other. Now for u squared minus eight squared, two sets of parentheses, u and u and eight and eight and plus and minus, and that equals zero. Now we have, we have four factors that we're gonna solve. Well, as soon as I set them equal to zero, we are. We're going to have u plus one equals zero. u minus one equals zero. u plus eight equals zero, and u minus eight equals zero. And then we solve each of those little equations. We're using the same steps, regardless of how many factors we have. Minus one, minus one. So u equals negative one. Over here, plus one, plus one. So u equals positive one. Over here, minus eight, minus eight. So u equals negative eight. And plus eight, plus eight. No. One minor mistake here. U squared breaks apart into U and U, not U squared. Well, darn, that ruins my whole strategy. Wish I hadn't caught it. Okay, well, oh well. We'll get back here, don't worry. I just jumped ahead. Okay. Now we're gonna have u minus one, forget the square for a minute. u minus one times u minus 64 equals zero. We solve each one, we get u equals, well, all right. No, no skipping steps. 
u minus 1 equals 0, u minus 64 equals 0. Plus 1, plus 1. u equals 1. Plus 64, plus 64. U equals 64. Now, we resubstitute. Because U really equals X squared, says so up here. So x squared equals 1. Let me keep drawing this down. x squared equals 1, and x squared equals 64. Now, at this point in your career, there is only one way to keep from making a terrible mistake. And here it is. I'm going to subtract one from both sides so that I have x squared minus one equals zero and subtract 64 from each side of the equation so that I have x squared minus 64 equals zero. Now, here is where I had jumped to. I now have the difference of two squares over here, and I now have the difference of two squares over there. Let's move these things over here. Let's move them down here. X squared minus one equals zero, and Just to give us more room, x squared minus 64 equals zero. These are the difference of two squares. So this is going to be x, x, one, and one, plus minus. And while we're at it, you can either finish this up or you can come over here and do the same thing. X, X, eight, eight, plus, minus. Okay, now, you set each factor equal to zero. X plus one equals zero, and X minus one equals zero. X plus eight equals zero. X minus eight equals zero. And now, now I solve each little equation to get my answers. Minus one, minus one. X equals negative one. Plus one, plus one. X equals positive one. Minus eight, minus eight. X equals negative eight. Plus eight, plus eight. X <clears throat> equals positive eight. 
So in this problem, you have four answers, four solutions. Why? Well, there's a basic rule in algebra that says that whatever the degree of the polynomial, that is whatever the highest degree of the variable is, that's how many answers you're going to have. Only some of them may be in the complex number system and you haven't learned anything about that yet. But here, you have four answers, four solutions that are in the real number system. Our number system. The one we love a lot of the time. So let's make the answer box and then we'll go back over this. We have negative one, one, negative eight, eight, or you can write these in order if you wanna be fancy, but you don't have to. And writing them in order would be to write them as they appear on the number line. Negative eight, negative one, positive one, positive eight. So now let's go back over everything we did. We initially used U substitution, which made us temporarily have a quadratic equation. And ideally, I would never have put that little two in there. How could I? because u squared times u squared would be u to the fourth, but right now, I, I, u to the fourth would be useless to me. I wouldn't get x to the fourth. So anyway, the u squared would split apart into u and u, and 64 would split apart into negative one and negative 64. We found that over here. So then we set each factor equal to zero and we solved for u. Add one to both sides, you get u equals one. Add 64 to both sides, you get u equals 64. Now that's great. U is solved for. But we do have this problem that u equals x squared. So we have to resubstitute. Since u equals x squared, we're going to have x squared equals 1 and x squared equals 64. Well, nobody's interested in what x squared equals. What they want is x. So we have to solve. And this is where it gets dangerous for you. Because you might want to do this. Well, if x squared is one, and I know one times one is one, well, x must equal one. And if x squared equals 64, well, I know that 64 is eight times eight, so it must be that x equals eight. And we would have completely left out the other two answers. And you haven't learned about something called the square root method yet, and you won't for a while. So what we have to do in order to solve for X is we have to subtract the other way and use what's called the zero principle. which is what we used, principle, which is what we used back here in the very first problem. The original problem was t squared plus 8t 
equals nine. We have to have a zero over here. That's what the zero principle says. And as a result, I had to subtract nine from both sides because nine minus nine is zero. And then whatever I do over here, I have to do over here. So we use the zero principle here to solve this quadratic equation. Now, here I am with this, this lovely problem. And this is a quadratic equation. X squared equals one is a quadratic equation because you've got a, a, a two highest power and you've got an equal sign and then equals a number or something. So it's a quadratic equation. So I have to use the zero principle to, um, let me get rid of that little guy right there, there. I have to use the zero principle in order to pull the quadrat, the entire quadratic equation over to one side and set it equal to zero. Same here. There's really no choice at this point. We have to use the zero principle. Then to solve this, well, that's the difference of two squares. So I wrote it over here so I could write it bigger. Then I factored by the difference of two squares. Then since this is equal zero, I have to set <clears throat> each factor equal to zero and solve. And I did the same over here. X plus eight, X minus eight, factoring this by the difference of two squares. And then because this equals zero, I set each of these binomial factors equal to zero. And then I solve, and then I solve, and then I solve, and then I solve, winding up with four answers, which is what I have to have, four solutions, because in reality, <clears throat> the original highest power is four which means I have four answers. Now, some of you who have been through this before might be wondering, well, okay, so here, highest power two, you have two answers, solutions. Here, highest power two, you only had one solution. You're gonna learn about that later. Yeah, I only have one solution, but it occurred twice. So that's OK. Your brain must be expanding. OK, now we're going to do factoring by GCF. And it's kind of easier most of the time. This is a quadratic equation, highest power two, but now it's a binomial. Notice you do not have the constant term at the end. You only have what's called the quadratic term and the linear term. And each of these terms has an S in it. So it has a GCF, a greatest common factor. I'm going to factor that out. S times S plus five equals zero. Now, each of these is a factor of, of this right there. When you multiply these together, you get that. That makes them factors. They don't look alike. This is a monomial. I set it equal to zero. A monomial factor. This is a binomial factor because there are two terms. S plus five equals zero. Now, S equals zero is already solved, 
but S plus five, I need to subtract five from both sides. S equals negative five. So I have two solutions to my quadratic equation. I could write it as negative five and zero. That's the way these numbers fall on the, um, on the x-axis on the number line. But you could say zero, negative five. Nobody's gonna mark you wrong. See how short and easy that was? I love these. Ah, now here we have a, a quadratic binomial. But look at this, you have the quadratic term and the constant term, and the constant term is a perfect square. Okay, I have no choice. I have to factor by the difference of two squares. R, R, three, three, plus, minus. Now I have two binomial factors. I'm going to set each of them equal to zero because the whole equation is set equal to zero. Now over here, I subtract three from both sides of the equation so that I have R equals negative three. And I add three to both sides of the equation. Negative three plus three is zero. So I have R equals positive three. And so in the answer box, I would write negative three and positive three. There's another way to do this that you may have seen or you may not have seen. We'll be using it later, we aren't using it now, but you could, if you wanted to, if the symbol I'm about to use is in the toolbar, plus minus three. This is a symbol that means one term is negative and one term is positive. You don't have to use it. I just thought you might like to know it's there. What this means is this. They mean the same thing. Okay, let's go on. If there is any going on. Now we're going to factor out a GCF. Remember we had a problem like this yesterday. Four is a perfect square and 100 is a perfect square. But the rule that you have to pull out a GCF first is stronger. And it saves you from a lot of extra steps. So, this is four times r squared minus four times 25 equals zero. So we pull out our GCF, four times r squared minus 25 equals zero. Now listen, and this is important. If anybody is going to sleep, wake up. I 
I am about to do something only because it's an equation. I'm going to put a big note beside it that said, I did this only because it's an equation. If, you, if this were an expression like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we couldn't do it. But it's an equation. You've got an equal sign that says equals zero. So I can do it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide by four and divide by four because I can do exactly the same thing to both sides of an equation, but only to an equation. I divided by four. Only because I am solving an equation. You can never do it to a variable. Never do this to a variable. A letter. exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Because a variable could be zero and you can't divide by zero. However, you can divide by four, no problem. The fours cancel, leaving me with R squared minus 25. And if you get your calculator and say zero divided by four, you'll see that you do not get an error message. You get zero. Zero divided by four is zero. Four divided by zero is undefined. It's easy to get those two mixed up. This is okay, all this equals is zero. Now, I can factor by the difference of two squares. This is r squared minus five squared equals zero. So boom, 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 boom equals zero. R, r, five, five plus minus. Now yesterday we left it there but not today because it's an equation. We have to solve an equation. So R plus five equals zero. R minus five equals zero. Over here on the left, subtract five, subtract five. Five minus five is zero, which leaves me with R equals negative five. Over here, I'll add five to both sides. R equals five. And so one more time, you've got negative five, and positive five as your solutions, or plus minus five. Either way, they're exactly equal to each other. Three equal signs means exactly equal. I don't know why you need three signs, but higher level math people say you do. When something is exactly equal, not just a little bit equal, exactly equal. Well, okay, fine.
but they're the same. Yeah. Now you might be asking yourself, but, 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 what happened to the four? The four is just a number. We need what R equals. So in a way, we're clearing away the fluff when we cancel out the four. Getting down to the real stuff. Now, this is one of those problems. You know that four is two squared. I'm going to subtract it from both sides because I'm going to use the principle of zeros. And then we'll factor this t plus 2 times t minus 2 equals 0. t plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, subtract 2, so you get t equals negative 2. t minus 2 equals 0 plus two plus two, t equals positive two. Notice the answer you get is the opposite of the sign. Eventually you start giving up the intermediate steps, kind of skipping them because you know the pattern, you know the pattern, you know the pattern. And it's boring as anything. But until then you should say minus two, minus two and plus two, plus two. Now I'm going to use this opportunity and the fact that the solutions to this equation are negative two and positive two to show you that other method, which is called the square root method. If we had left this as t squared equals 4, and we're not going to be doing this until closer to the end of the semester, but just for some of you who are curious, I need to know what t equals, and I know that t is the square root of t squared. So if I take the square root of t squared, I can take the square root of 4, but notice you get two answers. I have to compensate for that and put a plus or a minus in front of the square root sign. The only alternative is to turn t squared minus, oh, well, is to subtract 4 from both sides so you have t squared minus 4, and then factor by the difference of two squares, and then set each factor equal to 0, and then solve for t. And you'll have two answers, a positive 2 and a negative 2. This is just a quick way of compensating for that. So you will have t equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. Now that's a much quicker way to do it. But I'm not telling you to do it that way. We will talk about that a lot more later, not now. Now. 
Well, this actually, ah, this is our last problem. We might as well go ahead and do it. This is pretty much like the first, the first, this, like this. It's almost exactly like that. I use the zero principle and subtract 5t from both sides. Do not divide by 5t. You will get the wrong answer. I promise you should try it. All right, 35 is five times seven. So both of these terms have a five. GCF, and they have a T. Oh my goodness, isn't that great? This is five times seven times T times T minus five times T. You know I'm gonna pull the whole five T out. So times one. All right, so each term has a five and a T, and a five, and a T. So I can pull the five T out. And then write my leftovers. I have a seven and a T, and a minus one. That's why I put the one there. I saw that the five T was coming out. So you have to have a one. You can't put a zero, you've got to put a one. Okay. Now I'm not gonna be doing any hanky panky like dividing by five T because there's a letter in it can't do it. Now I could divide by the five, but it's just too much trouble thinking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set 5t equal to zero and 7t minus one equal to zero. Great. Well, all right, let me pull this up so you can see I'll, I'll solve for t here. I've got five times t, so I divide by five and divide by five. And I'll get t equals zero. And over here, I'll add one. So I'll have seven t equals one. When, when I've got something like this, I don't skip steps. Divide by seven, divide by seven. I'll have T equals one seventh. Yes. Okay, see I set both factors equal to, to zero. This is a monomial factor. That means it only has one term in it. This is a binomial factor. It has two terms in it, but they're both factors of 35t minus 5t. And I set them equal to zero, and here are the answers I've got. Go back to using my blue box. Zero comma one seventh. And those are your answers, your solutions to the equation.